Don, we're here at another FQXI conference, and no matter what the overall topic, uh, quantum cosmology always seems to be one of the sub-themes because many of the people here are quantum physicists interested in cosmology, and of course many cosmologists are here uh, too. Uh, as we apply the theories of the extremely small in quantum mechanics to the theories of the largest possible structures in, in the universe, w what are some of the the counterintuitive ideas that can come forth when we apply quantum mechanics to the whole universe. Yes, well, what, normally we apply quantum mechanics to things that are very small, and the universe is very big, mm -hmm. but we do believe that it, at least at some level of approximation, the universe was once much smaller than it is today, in fact, sufficiently small that quantum mechanics would have been important in it. And so if you take that into account, it's saying in some sense, the, the, just like in ordinary quantum mechanics, you can't have a definite position and definite momentum of a particle at the same time. At the same time, yeah. So if you if you measure one precisely, you'll, the other will be imprecise and so on. Then similarly, in, in, in quantum cosmology, the size of the universe and its expansion rate cannot both be arbitrarily precise. Uh -huh. Now, of course, the imprecision is extraordinarily tiny today compared to just our observational uncertainties as to how big the universe is and how fast it's expanding. But in the early universe, it, it, it appears like it may, it may have more, you know, more significance. And there could be, and, and we describe the universe in terms of a quantum state, and if we, if we talk about the quantum state in some approximate sense as a, as a superposition or a combination of different histories of the universe expanding, then we, the, we, could, we could say that in some crude sense, it's, it's roughly like an ensemble of different universes with, with different expansion rates and different, and different sizes and, and so on. And it, it does seem that, that our universe underwent a long period of what's called inflation, that it expanded exponentially, but exactly how much inflation, that might be something that's, that's, quantum, mechanically, that's quantum mechanically uncertain. I, I, I've heard this, co this concept of uh, different histories, uh, uh, different consistent histories of the universe, and that always sounds very confusing. Some would say they're like different alternatives and we sort of, one was chosen, that I sort of understand, but if, if we say, as many do, that they're all actual, they all all these different histories of the universe are actual, we just happen to be in one of the strands and can't access the others. I mean, that sounds bizarre. I think that's what I more or less believe in. I, I, I don't believe in collapse of what's called collapse of the wave function down to a single history. I do, I do believe that all of the histories are real. There's, it, there's a measure to them. So there's sort of a degree of reality. I mean, some of them have very, what we call very low measure. So in some sense, they don't have much existence, <laughs> and other ones have, you know, have have have, have more existence. We, we have existence. We have good existence, right? Well, uh, it's it's not. I mean, of course, for us, we, we're, I believe that we're selected out by our, our our consciousness, and so it could be if you if you just looked at the whole universe without con focusing on consciousness, yeah. it could be that it's a very tiny part of the wave function that has consciousness. But in some sense, when you ask what's observed about the universe, you have to put the selection that that there isn't a that there is an observer, that there, there is observations being made. And once you do that selection, then of course you're, you know, all of, all of the resulting of that does have sentient experiences in it, but of course they can be different. I mean, we could, there might be sentient experiences of seeing the universe being about 14 billion years old as, as we do, but there might be other sentient experiences of seeing the universe to be significantly younger or su significantly older. I mean, some people postulate that there might be Boltzmann brains that well, that they might they might exist, which when in a certain sense the universe is far older than it is today. Although most Boltzmann brains would probably not it know just the pops age. into existence and then pops out of existence, and <laughs> for that <laughs> time in existence, you don't know the difference between if it's real or not. Or I don't know, yeah, yeah. So they, I mean, it's that that. There are problems with Boltzmann brains that we, we, we would like to find theories in which they don't, that, that their contribution is very small compared to ordinary sentient observers, uh, or, ordinary observers but, but like we us. We just take the universe as out there in the third party sense, right. and we have all these different consistent histories right. because of quantum cosmology, because the whole thing was a quantum state. Right. Um, uh, and then how does the state, we think we're in a single state, we, we don't have any alternatives, we don't see any alternatives. Right. Uh, so uh, what, what is the reality of those other states and is the fact that we're consciousness having made some sort of a selection in a, in a, in a, in a retrospective sense? 
Well, I think it, it would have made a selection to the set that do have sentient observers, but I would believe that even that set is very huge, that there's, there's, other, there's other sets in which the universe is behaving you know, significantly differently, but there are sentient observers there. I mean, so it's, I, I don't see a problem of there being other sentient observers in these other branches any more than I see a problem that I very strongly believe that you are having a sentient experience, and I, and I know from experience that, that I am, although I, nothing I say could, could logically persuade you that that's the case because, you know, you, from your point of view, I, I might be, you might think I'm just a zombie. And of course, the other could be the other way around, but it's a much, it seems to be a much simpler hypothesis that, that, that we're both conscious. And, and because there's a multitude of different sentient experiences on Earth, it's, it's numerically, of course, a huge extrapolation to have vastly more of them if you had, if you had a big, uh, another, number of different histories, what you might call an Everett multiverse, a number of, whole, of different histories of the universe. It, it, it produces a, a, you know, a large number of other things, but it's, in some sense, it's maybe not qualitatively enormously different from the, just the large number of sentient observers that we have. When you're saying Earth. large, what do you mean by large? Uh, how, how many is large? <laughs> Well, we don't really know. I mean, eternal inflation suggests infinitely many. No, sure, but, but those are those are those are whole universes or pocket universes, pocket right? Universes. Now, so for sentient experiment, I don't know how many. I, I I suppose I do tend to think that that most probably there's an infinite number of different possible sentient experiences, but maybe you know probably there's. Only, I don't, this is highly guesswork, but you might say that maybe most of the probability or most of the measure is for some finite set of those. I mean, that, that's plausible, but we ha I, I can't say that I have any evidence you know, for it or against it. But it, if it were a finite number, I think it would, you know, I do think it would be utterly huge. I, I mean, suppose I said 10 to the 100, one followed by 100 zeros after it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying it is that at all. Now, it's probably far bigger, but right now I, I can't. That's probably the exponent. <laughs> yeah, that might be. Yeah, yeah, it might. It might. It might be the. It might be the exponent of that. I don't know exactly even how many sentient experiences there are. But 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 the the point is that quantum theory have given us this just enormous per, uh, uh, universal possibilities that we've never imagined before. Right. Right. Yeah. It gives us. Yeah. The, quantum theory does give us an enormous number of possibilities, and in the in the Everett view of no collapse, we say that they that there. Are, all real, and so it says that reality is enormously bigger than what we previously thought.